we're going to talk about what a tailing loop is not. I won't try to prove what a tailing loop is beyond what everyone here would agree on. Okay, first a little tutorial. The fly leg is a visual record of the rod tip path that created it. Because the human eye can't track the rod tip path, at least during the power snap, we can read casting loops while they're happening to see what our student did to the rod. So if the fly leg is straight, like this one, we know that the rod tip path was also straight. Same with that one. If the fly leg is convex, so was the rod tip path. And here's a wild one for you. If the fly leg is both concave and convex, so was the rod tip path. Here's a little challenge for you. Make every one of your forward stops at exactly the same place when you're demoing tails and tight loops for your students. So here's an RSP, and uh, we know there's a tail coming because you can already see the slight dip in the fly leg. So RSP, so I've stopped the rod at, oh, okay, let's call it 58 degrees above the horizon, something like that. Here's our nice concave um, path that you see uh, evidenced in the rod, in the fly leg, that is. And you get the classic double cross here. So you've got, uh, you've got a cross um, here, and you've got another cross right there. Classic tail. Okay, I've got a couple more tails coming here. Every one of these stops is in exactly the same place. Now we're going to get some nice flat fly legs. There's RSP right, right there, right? There's RSP. We get a flat fly leg. So it's not about where you stop the rod. It's about how you move the rod up to the stop. And the reason I'm telling you this is because there are a lot of people in our community who have radically short stops, like way up here, when they throw tails for their students. And it's not real world. It, it's just not what students do. So, and instead of throwing um, fly legs that look like that, they throw fly legs with trajectories, uh, like actually like one you'll see a little bit later, um, with trajectories that look more like Actually, there's one, in, there's one of Jason's illustrations, and I think it's an illustration of a Jimmy Green cast, where his fly leg trajectory is something like 30 degrees. Well, that's just not what our students do. So I challenge you to work on making tailing loops with stops in the same positions your nice tight loops have. I'm going to tell you a true story. September 2020, MCI... Uh, Rod McGarry and I tested an excellent CI candidate. Most of his casts were very good and his teaching was fantastic. But when I made casts like this, he said, oh, those are, those are tailing loops. After I insulted his mother, uh, we asked him to draw us a tailing loop on the ground. And he drew us a closed loop, much like what you see right here. Because he was required to pass all the teaching tasks, we had to fail him even though he was in every other respect really good. So after the test was over, when we lay my cast down on the ground, uh, basically drew this, and we asked, uh, we asked him what was the rod tip path that had created that fly leg right here, he said, wait a minute, because he was obviously looking at a straight fly leg. He realized he was mistaken. He realized that the straight fly leg had to, have come from, had to have come from a straight line path of the rod tip. And he realized in that instant that maybe every tailing loop image he'd ever seen in casting books was simply wrong. Images like this one from Mac Brown's Casting Angles. So 
where is the concave path in Mac's fly leg? Um, where's his concave path? There isn't one. It can't be a tail. So here are some illustrations from Jason Borger's Nature of Flycasting. Jason's illustration is confusing because he captures the tail while much of the fly leg is still behind the rod tip. Your casting student never has this view of her own tailing loops, so the primary impression this image gives is of a closed loop with some concavity to it. It doesn't look like a classic tail. There's something else going on here. Let's look at the trajectory of these two fly legs. Look at the fly leg of the upper cast of B. That fly leg trajectory 30 some degrees. So if this is a Jimmy Green cast, Jimmy stopped the rod really early on the forward cast so that he could ensure he'd throw a big tail. Absolutely not a real world cast. None of your tailing loop students whose tailing loops you're actively trying to fix are throwing casts like that. So again, when you go to throw tails for your students, please throw a basically horizontal fly leg, which is what they're doing when they throw tails inadvertently. How about the head instructor at Joan Wolfe's school, MCI Sheila Hassan? Sheila's book is Fly Casting, A Systematic Approach. So you see here, Sheila's fly leg is straight. There's no concavity to it. Therefore, it can't be a tail. Now let's see what Joan has to say from her 1987 book, Joan Wolfe's Flycasting Techniques. So Joan's illustration gets it right here. You see, a, you see a concavity right there, a dip. And what should happen is that concavity should grow, should actually deepen. I should say it should deepen. It's like a bowl. Um, you don't see that happening here. In fact, the concavities become less dramatic in, in, in this cast. Um, and then the concavity sort of has gone away. There, there's, it's there, but then look at this long, whatever that is, that's essentially flat. The implication again, and, and what, what we should see here is something kind of like that. That's a classic tail that we'd all look at and go, yeah, that's a tailing loop. That's what my students' tailing loops look like. So the implication Joan gives here is exactly what she writes here. Fly line goes under the rod tip. And this is exactly what Rods and my failed CI candidate said to us. He said, he said it's a tail because the fly line went under the rod tip. He may have taken this directly from Joan's book. He may have taken it from Sheila's book or from Mac's book. He may have misread Jason's subtle uh, illustrations of tales. So who was our CI candidate to question the wisdom of Joan Wolfe or Sheila Hassan or, or Jason Borger or Mac Brown so what do all of these illustrations have in common? They're drawings. They aren't real casts. If they had used photographs, maybe our CI candidate would have passed, right? By the way, I just want to point out that even though Mac Brown doesn't caption this as a tale in this illustration, in the accompanying text, he refers to this illustration as a tailing loop. By the way, the people we're talking about here have been mentors to us, they're peers, they're our beloved friends. We hold them lightly when they're mistaken, just as they would do for us when we are mistaken. And all of us are wrong about some things. That's part of the reason why we do continuing education. 
So we agree here that to be mistaken um, is to simply be human. What happens when we use photographs instead of drawings to illustrate our tailing loops? Uh, here's a Craig Buckby spay cast, and it's spectacular. You see his SLP and the fly leg here. That's a straight line path. That's, excuse me, pardon me, I got that wrong. <laughs> oh, because it's the top, it must be the fly leg. No, obviously, Mac. That's the rod leg. Where's his fly leg? There's his fly leg. That's an SLP. Oh, but the fly leg passed below the rod tip and below the rod leg. It must be a tailing loop. It's not a tailing loop, folks, is it? That is a spectacular spay cast. So he's got a micro loop right here, right? A leading edge. And you see that it's what, unfortunately, some people now call underslung or trailing. Like every spay cast ever made, like practically every pickup off the water you've ever made, they were all casts in which the fly leg traveled out from under the rod leg. And this begs the question, why do we even describe a fly leg or a cast as underslung or trailing? When I started on the Casting Board of Governors in 1996, we just called loops like this closed. It was a simple descriptor and not of some kind of anomalous cast. Surely Mel Krieger being Mel and being the founder of this amazing organization that brought us together today, surely Mel got it right in his photograph in his The Essence of Fly Casting from 1987. Well, what do you think? He's got a beautiful SLP right there. Um, yes, his fly leg has descended below his rod leg. Um, it's a beautiful closed loop cast. So here's Mel's caption. Unloading the rod too soon or too quickly causes the rod tip to stop above the path of the fly line the result will be a tailing loop. Isn't it ironic that we examiners would have had to fail Mel and Joan, the two central pillars of this program on today's CI test? Yeah. With Mel's slow line speed, his fly leg has simply descended below his rod tip, just as every one of Steve Rajeff's long cast has done since Steve was 13 years old just like every one of your long casts does. That's why we can't the rod off to the side. It's not because we're throwing tails, it's just because of gravity working on the fly leg or because the fly line began its journey on its next cast somewhere low as on the pickup. A shameless plug, this is from my book which was published in 2007. And you see there a classic tail. And this one's from Lefty's uh, Casting with Lefty Cray. And it's a really nice photo of a tail. And what I love about it is you've got the front of the bowl or the dish and you've got the back of the dish. It's like a cave that moves along from the rod tip. And in another eighth of a second, um, the tail would cross in two places. It would cross, well, there's there and it would so it's crossed about there, and it would be a classic tail. Unfortunately, in his text, um, Lefty gave a description of this that would have caused us to have to fail him on the CI test. It, it didn't make sense. Okay, what's the moral of this story? Well, if the fly leg doesn't have an obvious concavity to it, it's not a tail. Closed loops are not faulty casts. Your words matter. If Joan and Mel and Lefty got it wrong, and nice wide loop back cast, if they got it wrong and you then repeat their erroneous words or illustrations without thinking it through, you'll get it wrong too. Finally, please 
always use photos or vid videos to illustrate your cast. Always. No more drawings or illustrations ever. Because it's too easy to make a drawing, draw a picture, and get something wrong. When it's time to display the photo or video to your student, show it to them on your tablet or your phone. So whatever happened to that guy that Rod McGarry and I had to fail on his CI test? He passed. How could we fail him just because he trusted the wisdom of Joan and Mel, Sheila Hassan, Mac Brown, Lefty Cray? We couldn't fail him. It was because our peers got the tailing loop wrong that he got it wrong too. Now it's up to us, it's up to you to get it right. Thank you. Nice tail. <laughs>